Hello and welcome to Cosmic Consciousness with Cassia. On this channel we discuss all aspects of the ascension process. I have a variety of services that I offer to assist in your awakening journey and you can find those listed in the description box below. We're going to be doing a video today on the 1111 portal and the gateway to this portal is open. I feel the strongest energies of this gateway from 11-1 November 1st until 11-11 November 11th. Uh, but absolutely this gateway can have opened beforehand. Remember, time is not linear. Uh, it is uh, very expansive and it is not bound by dates. However, we do feel the most potent of these energies moving from the, from the 1st to the 11th and absolutely on and around that day. This is a gateway of energy that is opened that allows us to have enhanced contact with inter with beings that are not in physical form right interdimensional beings of which we are absolutely but those who are not incarnated in this physical reality right so uh our star team extraterrestrial energies uh our guides our teams our ancestors all, any and all of these energies uh we the veil between worlds is much thinner and so we have, of course, an ability to connect more. We also receive very powerful activations and downloads, uh, changes to our light body, our DNA structure, all of these different things on and around these portal dates and through these gateways uh, of these portal energies. So it's really, really powerful, really fun and really intense. And this 1111 energy is uh, what I was told or what what came through for me is that it is a creator's portal. What that means is that it is an intense manifestation gateway. So we really want to be cognizant of our words, of our thoughts, of our vibration as we move through this energetic gateway because we are creating even more powerfully than we typical, typically do. So we want to use this energy to our benefit. And I am going to read some channeled material later on that talks about uh, paying attention to what it is that we've created in our reality at this point. We really want to be examining every little detail as we move through this 1111 gateway. I do have a video with Pete Sapper from Empath Uprising on the 1111 portal as well. And so uh, when that video comes out, I'm going to link it in the description box below in case you guys want to check that out too. Different stuff always comes through when I'm on there with him. And so it's a great way to get another perspective on these energies. I also recommend that you guys check out the new moon in Scorpio video because the new moon in Scorpio is happening during the 1111 gateway. And it came through as a very powerful opening of energy, uh, a very powerful kind of portal within a portal during this 11-11 gateway. So it felt like I was doing an 11-11 reading during that new moon in Scorpio video. There's a lot of really good information in the reading portion of that video regarding the 11-11 portal as well. So like I said, check that out. That's in the Astrological Ascension Energies playlist, or it should be right in the recent videos because I believe that's being released uh, on Saturday. So I'm not sure when I'm releasing this one yet as I'm recording it, but uh, when that that one will be out as well. So absolutely check check the New Moon in Scorpio video. Out. So yes, this is the Creator's Portal. As we said, it's a powerful manifestation gateway. This is also a portal of alchemy, and this is 1111 is the awakening code, and so. Throughout this portal, throughout this gateway of energy, we are all going to be awakening on a deeper level. We're going to be activated on a deeper level. And something interesting, there was a lot of interesting things that came through for this portal, actually. But something that was interested was that, or was interesting that came through was that the lieutenants are going to be activated during this portal. And so these would be the way showers. These would be the people who are meant to lead as we move forward. And, um, let me see what else what else I had here regarding the lieutenants. Yeah, those who are meant to play key roles in paving the way to the new earth. And so they're going to be receiving the necessary activations and awakenings um, in order them to fulfill this next stage of their mission. And some of these lieutenants are going to be activated or awakened for the first time during this portal. There's a lot of energies and people that are going to be awakened. It's the way that this was put was they were called sleepers. And so sleepers are going to be activated and awakened during this portal. And the interesting things that was that some of these sleepers happen to be people in places of power, even in this world who have been thus far asleep. And so something that we learn about starseeds in general is that we come to this earth, right? We are, we're not from here. 
we're from different galaxies, we're from different dimensions, we're from different star star clusters, uh, planets, whatever you will. And we come to this earth, there's a lot of star seeds on this planet right now who are here to assist in the evolution of the earth, right? And so we have like a pre-programmed time that we decide to awaken or activate. And some of these star seeds have not awakened or activated yet, so they're considered sleepers. Uh, but they will be awakening and activating during this 1111 portal energy. And that's one of the reasons why it's so important that those of us who are awakened set that intention to receive and hold and ground as much light as possible and send that light out to humanity. And that meditation is going to be included in one of the channelings that I read for you guys. Uh, because that's helping to activate these sleepers as well, as well as assist the earth in her in her process, right? So really interesting. Another interesting thing that came up was the fact that we're going to have quite a few walk-ins coming to the planet during this 1111 portal. And so a walk-in is essentially what happens is somebody who, a soul who is already incarnated has decided that they've had enough. They don't want to be here anymore. They're, they're done. They're finished, but they don't want to, they don't want to end their life, right? They want the, they want the, um, the avatar to continue going, right? And they don't want to necessarily incur, have to come back and do this all over again. And so they, it's kind of like a tag team effort, right? They tag in somebody else and another soul comes and takes up resonance in that body. It sounds kind of crazy, but, uh, probably not to most people watching this channel. It's, there's not really much that sounds crazy to us, right? So this is what a walk-in is. So there's going to be a lot, quite a few walk-ins coming through during this time as souls who feel that they've experienced enough are ready to move back to the non-physical and another soul is ready to come in. And so there's going to be two main types of souls that are walking in during this period. There's going to be those advanced souls who are coming to play a key role in the ascension process, right? Kind of like reinforcements coming in. And there's going to be those souls who genuinely desire a deep level of evolution during this one lifetime, right? So those are the two types of souls that we're going to have coming in. And it's really interesting, too, because I questioned this when I got this, um, when, I, when this came through, because I, my understanding was that in order to... Uh, keep the balance of free will on this planet only so many souls of elevated consciousness were allowed to incarnate during this process and i was told that the rules the rules of engagement and i believe this is something that um that pete sapper said and it was great on empath uprising and i loved when i heard him say this because it really um validated the information that i had that had come through for me he i think he used the term the rules of engagement have changed and so essentially the balance is not being upheld anyway right uh that these energies these energies these uh darker energies or controller energies or whatever you want to call them are not playing by the rules and because they're not playing by the rules the rules have been suspended in some ways and so we're able to have some more reinforcements coming at this time some more elevated souls with higher consciousness who are stepping in to really assist us on the ground level moving forward so that's really uh powerful that's some powerful stuff coming through here Let's see what else is um, what else is going on here. The eleven eleven portal is also eleven. Being a master number is the messenger, the illuminator, and the teacher. And so it is this deeper level of illumination that we're all experiencing. It's also where we are going to be receiving more messages, more downloads, and we are going to be called to share what we're receiving and also to share the knowledge and the wisdom that we've gained, right? Each and every single one of us is a way shower, is a leader, is a teacher. So what is it that you have to share? What is it that you have to teach? It's we're really being called to step up in terms of wherever it is, where are we meant to play that teacher, right? Remember, we're all eternally, both the student and the teacher but really stepping into that role as teacher really sharing what it is that we have learned and yes any of those transmissions that are coming through and really having the courage to do that right sometimes we're afraid to be wrong but remember it's all perspective so whatever is coming through you could share that and whoever's going to resonate with that is going to resonate with that and whoever isn't isn't and that's okay all right, what else? Yes, huge creation energy. So work with your creativity. Work with your creativity. Uh, if you want information on your dharma, on your life path, on your mission at this time, sit in meditation throughout this entire portal. Show up every day in meditation and ask, and you will receive answers. 
And so now uh, I'm going to read you uh, the first the first transmission that came through regarding this 1111 portal. And it says, around this portal, pay close attention to everything that you are experiencing in your reality. See what you have created. Why did you create it? The knowledge and understanding of the why is what facilitates lasting change. What beliefs are a factor in the creation of your reality and what detrimental beliefs can you deconstruct during this time? No detail should go unnoticed because it is all a divine reflection of what is happening within you. It's time to clear and declutter the mind and come back to the heart. This is why meditation is so important. You are all so incredibly and divinely interwoven and interconnected, and you will feel this very acutely during the 1111 portal and gateway. You will have the opportunity to experience what it is like to be one mind, one organism. You are all part of the earth and a part of each other. Examine and come to understand Gaia's ecosystems and you can come to understand yourselves. Each aspect of nature understands and senses the other, what it needs and the purpose it serves, and also knows its own role within the greater web of creation. You will begin to get a sense and an understanding of this as well, where it is that you fit, what it is that you are meant to do, and what it is that is needed of you, and how it is that you can best assist and complement all of the other aspects of creation. Meditate daily, bring in the light. Imagine it flowing through you and out to all of humanity, all of Gaia. The more consciously you do this, the more powerfully you will be able to receive the activations and the more powerful a channel you will become for this light. The light coming in through this portal is meant to be anchored into the planet. It is meant to be dispersed to all of creation and you are the vessel through which this is happening. As you connect to others, you amplify this energy and you enable the shifts that are happening on this planet to happen more smoothly. Tap into the beautiful creative ebb and flow of energies that are available to you right now. Allow them to inspire you. Allow them to help you to remember who you are. There is a deeper sense of unity that is available to all during this time. You may pick up on and sense the moods, thoughts, and feelings of others much more acutely. Use this in a positive sense to help determine what the best course of action for the highest good of all is, but ensure that you are also protecting yourself from energy and any energies or vibrations that are, should we say, not helpful for your growth at this time. <clears throat> So really paying attention to all of that, paying attention to what's present in your reality and what that can teach you, what it is that you are creating and consciously begin to uncreate the things that you that you uh, dislike and to create or reinforce the things that you do. And I really liked this energy, uh, just thinking of the earth and her ecosystems, right? And ev how everything is so interconnected and how everything works to facilitate uh, this this planet and the the continued um, growth of this planet, the continued I don't know what the words are that I'm looking for right now, but you guys you guys know and understand if you think about a forest and the way that a tree grows and how that tree offers shade to the different creatures, right? It offers home to some of the creatures. It uh, the roots stretch down under the earth and they all interconnect with each other. And when the tree dies, it offers sustenance to the earth and the mushrooms come and they and they begin to decompose and break down the tree and just how everything works in perfect concert together as one living organism. So really seeing and understand, understanding ourselves as part of that living organism, both in a biological sense and in the form of our consciousness and working with that energy. And this, this portal is also a portal of alchemy, right? So we are alchemizing, we are shifting. This, this first reading talked about the belief systems that we've been shifting throughout this year of 2021 that's really coming back into focus again because those are creating our reality. So many energies that we are alchemizing right now with this energy of Scorpio, right, where we're alchemizing and we're integrating so much of our shadow, so much, just so much, right? And so... With this energy of alchemy, this is this is what came through. And this was also partially an answer to a question I asked because I wanted to understand the energy of alchemy more and sort of the process of alchemy. And so what came through was, you are an alchemist. Every time you transform pain into wisdom, you are practicing alchemy. Every time you shift your perspective, you are practicing alchemy. Every time you shift a belief system, you are practicing alchemy. Every time you show faith in the face of fear, you are practicing alchemy. Every time you bring joy to a broken heart, you are practicing alchemy. Every time you heal, every time you hurt, every time you laugh, every time you cry, you are practicing alchemy. Alchemy is simply the shifting of energy from one form to another. It does not have to be complicated or complex. What is it that you are wanting to shift? What is it that you are wanting to change? It is not about the eradication of a thing. It is about the transformation and transmutation of that energy into something different, something higher. 
You do this naturally without even thinking about it. Now is the time to begin to do it consciously, to call in the darkness and alchemize it to light, to call in the pain and alchemize it to bliss. The darkness on this planet can become your fuel if you can use it to create greater and greater amounts of light simply through your intention. Darkness is simply light that is unrecognized. There is a distortion that wants to be released. This is the great secret about darkness. It wants to become light because at its core, that is what it is. That is its truth before the truth became distorted by fear, by anger, by pain. When you alchemize darkness and return it to light, you are liberating it. You are freeing it. Just as you seek liberation, the darkness does too. You did not come here to fight the darkness. You came here to free it, to call it home. It has given you a great gift, given you contrast, variation. It is time to repay that gift by allowing it to return home. As more and more darkness is liberated and returned to light, the desire within darkness to do so that has been forgotten shall return. Darkness is the void of creation, the sacred womb. It is from darkness that you weave your dream. And so in this case, when we're talking about darkness, we're talking about those, those heavier, darker energies, right? Those, those energies of control, those energies uh, that, uh, that we are seeking to liberate ourselves from. So it's all about alchemizing alchemizing um, their their power source and returning that to light so really really powerful and then of course alchemizing anything with within us that is seeking and wanting to be shifted so really um beautiful beautiful um energies that we're working with in this 1111 portal and this gateway <clears throat> so i want to pull some with secret language of light cards to get us started here What guidance do we have for this 11-11 portal from the secret language of light? And like I said, make sure you check out that new moon in Scorpio video because there was a lot that came through that was very relevant to the 11-11 portal. And that's going to be a huge um, gateway of energy, portal of energy there. We're going to be receiving a lot of uh, light, light body activations and transmissions during that new moon in Scorpio. So we have soul journey coming out, card nine. And then we have Remembrance, card 11, which is absolutely perfect, right? So this is that energy of remembering on a deeper level who we are, right? 1111, the activation code, the awakening code. Waking up to a deeper remembrance of who we are and why we're here, of our soul's journey. And so for some people, this means uh, recalling past life memories, which are really just us in an currently in another dimension or reality or timeline, right? Uh, coming to get a clearer understanding of our soul's journey and uh, why we came here, right? Why, we, why we're here right now in this now moment, what we are meant to do in this now moment, who we are in this now moment and who we are at our core. So really taking a deeper, it's like the next level of our journey, of our soul's journey as well. And then on the bottom of the deck, we have light beings. So connecting with our beautiful star family, with those beings of light in other dimensions, remembering our soul's journey as a light being as well, right? Some of these uh, memories that are remembrances, spontaneous remembrances that we have may have to do with lifetimes that we're not, we were not incarnated on earth. For some of us, this is our first lifetime on earth. And I say that because time, right? Then we have grounding. So really grounding in that light, this is a great representation of the power and the importance of that meditation that was talked about, right? All of that powerful high frequency light that's coming through. And just like you see it moving through this tree and anchoring and rooting into the earth, we are like that tree, right? We are that tree. We are that intermediary between heaven and earth that's allowing this light to ground into the planet right now. So be the tree. That's way too many cards there. But we did have 44 expansion. We had joy. And then we had divine, divine feminine and Vesica Pisces coming out. For those of you who uh, were intrigued by that. And we definitely see this expansion of the light body going on. We see the Merkaba, the chakra system, right? All of that being connected and illuminated and aligned. So a lot of alterations and upgrades to our light bodies, and that's card 44. 
So really just receiving that, being open to that. It's like we're grounding that light into the earth and we're also, as it's moving through us, it's expanding us like this. And reconnecting us to our joy. All right, what else? Wellness. So once again, that meditation, they really want us to be meditating, bringing in anchoring and connecting to that heart energy as well. Anchoring that in with our heart energy. This is like knowledge of the heart, right? You see the sword. Swords represent truth. Communication, communicating with our hearts. Acknowledging the truth within our hearts. Taking that time during this portal for us. For our own, allowing ourselves to focus on our own wellness. And understanding the, the impact that that has on the on the, the world at large. Yeah, those cards wanted to come out. And I love how Divine Feminine and Vesica Pisces came out. But then we also have on the bottom of the deck now the Divine Masculine. So this is really that, that unification, right? Of the masculine and feminine, the two energies that create the third energy. Right? The union of these two aspects which is really, really powerful energy as we receive activations both for our feminine and our masculine. They unify, they come together. Potent twin flame energy during this portal. Mm -hmm. And I want to read the Vesica Pisces for you guys too. It says, creating soul truth in the world. The outside world feels more real than the inner world because we have been encouraged to focus more on what is outside of us. We have learned to give things that can be seen by others or touched by us more importance than what we feel. Making decisions can become difficult when our awareness is focused away from our inner needs and wants. When our internal and external realities are integrated, decisions are clear and easily made. This leads to satisfaction as there is no resistance to your fulfillment. When we scan the myriad possibilities open to us in the manifested world, we will know what we want and we will not feel overwhelmed. In this space, we become grateful for the decisions we have made and all the ones we will make in the future. And so this is, once again, a representation of that masculine and feminine energy when it comes to decision making as well, when it comes to creation, right? The logical and the intuitive and that place where they intersect in the middle, right? The, the seen world and the unseen world. And finding that, finding that, that sweet spot right in the center. And you see the heart there, allowing our heart to be that guide that guides us to that place. Yeah. Yeah. So beautiful unification energies here and transformation underneath that on the bottom of the deck. So just really powerful energies here. And we did, I did the star seed Oracle for the new moon in Scorpio reading. So I'm going to do the work your light cards for this reading and see what else we can get here clear what guidance do we have from the work your light deck from our beautiful star brethren for this 11 11 portal and gateway okay <clears throat> we have pleiades double mission channeling and uplifting humanity and then we have the age of light. You've been training for this for lifetimes. This is the age of light, right? We are moving out of the age of darkness into the age of light. That is part of our mission. That's part of what we came here to do. That's part of why we are huge part of why we are here. And we go into all the reasons that we're, the, that we're here in the um, new moon and Scorpio reading. So like I said, check that out. We're not going to reiterate all of that. But this is, and many people who have many star seeds have Pleiadian connections and roots. So uh, you may be receiving communication from them. You may want to reach out to them. Uh, but they're coming through to remind us that we are here on a double mission. We're channels for that light. And we're also here to uplift humanity through our example, right? To show them a different way, to show them what this age of light can look like, what that can feel like, and give them the option and the opportunity to choose it if they so wish. Right? But always respecting that it's their choice. Nobody has to come along on this ascension if they don't want to. If their soul is better suited to continue evolving in the 3D, that's fine. 
right? Those aren't the people that we came here for. We came here for the people who are ready to, uh, I want to just say ready to graduate with us, right? Ready to move upward and onward, I guess you could say. And you have been training for this for lifetimes. That's why some of your soul's journey is going to come back to you during this portal to remind you of the training that you have, to remind you of how competent you are, to remind you of what you know, and to restore some of those gifts and abilities that are necessary uh, as we move forward from here. Then we have Just Say Yes coming out. And we also have Anna, Grandmother of Jesus, Jesus seeding the light lane foundations divine plan and seeding the light that's what we're talking about here right perfect because it's a true tree too right seed and so when it comes to just say yes what i'm feeling for this is if you are being given opportunities to share your light to share your wisdom just say yes don't allow that that self-critic that fear of inadequacy that fear of that, uh, that sense of unworthiness to cause you to say no to an opportunity that you want to say yes to. Don't allow that perfectionism to come in, that energy that says that you're not ready. You are ready. And you know what's really interesting is you notice how their hands in both of these cards are making a triangle. And you got the triangles in both these cards too. The pyramids. That's really interesting. Yeah. So just say yes if you have those opportunities to share your wisdom, to share your gifts. Say yes. Say yes, say yes, say yes. And uh, whatever, whatever is coming through, if it feels good in your heart, then say yes. Even if there is fear, even if it's causing you to step into the unknown, if it feels right, if it resonates, then say yes. Yeah, and we are creating that. We are laying that foundation for the new earth right now. We are planting those seeds, and those seeds are growing, you guys. Those seeds are growing. We are creating. So it's like, what part of that foundation building are you are you assisting in at this time? And it's going to look different for different people. Some people are focused on self-sustaining communities, creating these off-grid communities and networks for people. Some people like me are focused on the empowering and the uplifting of of those going through this ascension process also of the assistance with with all of the energies and the navigation of those energies uh the bell vespita and some of the different things that i do really assist with that as well so all that information is in the description box below if you want to reach out to me and find out more or go check out my website um there's different ways that's that's how i'm assisting and laying this foundation right now uh there's there's so many different ways that people are doing this and so it's like what what is your role in that process and like we said that role is going to be becoming more clear to you as you move through this portal but just know and understand that simply by continuing to grow and be curious and say yes right and heal you are you are doing your part at this time more is revealed when it's meant to be revealed if it hasn't been meant if it hasn't been revealed yet it's just not meant to be known so we just have to trust and we just have to keep moving forward and keep healing and keep growing and keep uh keep holding that light right and imrama where are you being called to journey to some people are being called on journeys and pilgrimages i am going on a pilgrimage to egypt next month uh which is as one of my friends put it it was perfect they said that's your mecca and it is for me so where are you being called to journey to? Either physically or astrally, right? Within your own soul, within your own heart, or in the physical manifested world. If there's somewhere that you're being called, you're being called there for a reason. And yes, we can travel anywhere astrally, but there is something except exceptionally powerful of being in that physical space. Right? So if you're able to take that pilgrimage, to take that journey, then go. That's another just say yes. Right? If that opportunity is offered to you, accept it because there's something there for you. There's something there that you're meant to find, that you're meant to see. And then, of course, coming out after that was answer the call. What is your soul calling you to do? Some people, your soul is really calling you to make a pilgrimage, to make a voyage. And I know that this is a very... Um, it's a it's it's a it's a bit of a, a tense time to be doing this right it takes an incredible amount of faith uh especially depending on what on different things um that make travel possibly a little bit more complicated right it can be um 
different rules and regulations and where we fall in the scope of those. It can be a scary time to do this. But some of us, we are really being called. I'll tell you, it's been a uh, very complex sort of uh, sorting out the details of my trip. And I'm definitely probably not going to go on another pilgrimage until everything kind of evens itself out a little bit here. But um, I absolutely know that I'm meant to go on this one. And it's worth whatever it takes to arrange it, right? So uh, what is your soul calling you to do? And not everyone's soul is calling you to travel or take a pilgrimage. But what is it calling you to do? That's going to become more clear to people during this during this portal. And even if that doesn't seem like your purpose or your path or you don't understand why, know that that's leading you there. That's leading you to a deeper understanding and realization. So just follow the call of your soul. Follow the call of your soul. Follow the call of your soul. And I want to, I want to grab, oh, I guess so. I'll get a couple Star Temple oracles. To close this out here. Clear. Guidance for this 1111 portal from the Pleiadians. This is a Pleiadian deck, the Star Temple deck. First card out is the Diamond Star Destiny. I focus on service and follow my higher purpose. If you don't know what that higher purpose is, service will lead you there. Because that higher purpose for pretty much all of us has to do with service. So where is it that you can be of most service in the world? in your world right now. That's the simplest way to break it down. Ask for those opportunities to be of service and they'll be shown to you. Like we said, let your heart lead you, let your heart guide you. See this beautiful spiral in the center of her being, right? It's a spiral, it's an evolution. Our purpose is constantly evolving as we are. anything else your heart is your map to your destiny ask yourself where is it that i can be of greatest service in my world in the in the larger world right now and then we have beloved zeus lovers this cosmic union is destined for greatness so once again that twin flame energy coming in remember we are our own twin flame but once we unite our own masculine and feminine we often call in a counterpart to our energy Somebody who is aligned, and this is, with this destiny card and the service following your higher purpose, this is illustrating perfectly exactly what it means, that true twin flame energy, right? The tw our true twin flame is our own, our own masculine and feminine energies. But we also have souls sometimes that we are contracted with who have the same divine blueprint as us, as far as their blueprint of service, their mission, their higher purpose. And we are being brought together with those souls to fulfill that higher purpose, to fulfill that higher service to humanity. And that's not always a romantic relationship. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. All right. And I'm going to be doing a video talking about some of this twin flame energy with Eric from Divine Conversations. If you guys haven't checked out his channel, it's it's really incredible, especially if you really love tarot because he does daily tarot readings. He, he works with um, sidereal Vedic astrology. So it's a different perspective on astrology as well. He's really, really great. So we're going to be getting into some of these deeper themes and understandings of this twin flame dynamic and these souls that we call twin flames and what that's all about. But the true twin flame is yourself. After you've achieved union with that, you sometimes call in this higher, this partner who has, a, who has the same soul blueprint, the same blueprint of evolution in this lifetime, who has the same purpose, who has the same calling. And you combine your energies in order to, in order to assist humanity, in order to assist, you know, the 144,000, the star seeds, the light workers, whoever it is here that you're here to assist, one is all, right? Um, moving forward. And we can have more than one twin flame too. As if we're looking at it as an outer energy, we can have more than one. We can have a soul who shares our divine blueprint, who comes in when we're not fully healed yet. And if they choose a path that is not aligned with ours, that contract, that contract can be resolved, dissolved and we can be recontracted with somebody else, which is really interesting, really interesting. And then we have the enchanter dream. I wish upon a star and my dreams come true. 
So that's that manifestation energy. You are always creating. What is it that you want? And that's wicked funny too, right? Because uh, one of the things that I forgot um, that I was reminded of recently was like when you were young, right? And you saw 1111, what did people say? They said, it's 1111, make a wish. So we have wishing upon a star. And that's sort of a, a throwback, right? A kickback to this understanding that this is a manifestation gateway. What are your dreams? What are your wishers? Know that those wishers, <laughs> you know what I mean? Know that those wishers can come true, <laughs> right? All possibilities are possible. So really suspend your judgment, right? Step out of the logical linear mind when it comes to what you want to create and just be in that pure energy of creation. And then we have Maya coming out, the ruby star flow. I embrace my authentic and sensual essence. A lot of those powerful sensual and sexual energies coming through as we have this 11-11 portal, as it always is during the uh, Scorpio season, right? With that powerful new moon in Scorpio that we were talking about as well happening on the 4th during this 11-11 gateway. And so there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of becoming embodied, right? And working with that sensual energy, working with that sexual energy, right? Owning that as our own. Right? Having that connection, how, do I, how am I connected to my own sexual energy when I'm not sharing it with another, but when I'm simply working with it myself, when I'm feeling into it, when I'm connecting with it myself, and how can I channel that energy creatively, right? Because our sexual energy is our creative energy. It is the most powerful creative energy. And that's why for so long, sexual energy has been has been distorted right that wasn't an accident that was done on purpose we were we lost contact with the sacredness of that energy with the potency of that energy and it became just about instant gratification right it became a commodity and so we are reclaiming that energy and as we do that that shifts so much yeah, so really working with your own sexual and sensual energies during this 1111 portal, connecting in with yourself, reclaiming that, cleansing that, purifying that. This energy is all about cleansing and purification. Try to eat as light as you can, right? Try to eat as clean as you can. Try to keep your world as clean as you can, as far as what you're allowing into your reality. Uh, because there's an incredible purification that's coming through here. And then we have Acopius the Seer, Visionary. I chart the star signs and symbols to craft magic. So working with astrology, right? Working with the signs and synchronicities in your own life. Understanding how to utilize those energies. And I feel like this coming out with this, with this ruby star here. Bringing us back to that uh, new moon in Scorpio. And those Scorpio energies, working with that new moon in Scorpio, you want to manifest something, you want to create something, that is a huge gateway for you to be able to do that. We are doing a new moon manifesting ceremony. It's going to be, I believe the time that we have decided on is 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the 4th during the Scorpio new moon. If you guys want to join that, the information to do so is in the description box below. It's going to be really fun uh, that we've kind of branched out. I've joined forces with a couple of my beautiful goddess sisters and so uh, we're going to have Gigi calling in the directions, um, setting that sacred space. She is a shaman. And then we have Nikki Lamankusa, who has a beautiful channel, Majestic Unicorn Healing. I highly suggest you guys check her out. She's going to be doing some light language for us and bringing through any channelings that want to come through. And I'll be doing the downloads and the releases and the astrology talk and all the things that I normally do. We're, we're going to be doing a manifestation meditation together. It's going to be really, really powerful. But however you use that energy, use that energy. Use it to liberate yourself sexually, right? To liberate your sexual energy. Use it to create. Use it to reclaim any aspects of you that are ready to be reclaimed. In the in the um the other reading, the new moon and Scorpio reading, the energy of reclaiming our innocence kept coming out. So that's a huge energy as well. What are you seeking to release? What are you seeking to reclaim? Yeah. All right. We could keep going with this, but I feel like we've got the gist of it right now. Uh, just super potent and powerful energies that we're working with. Um, I'm so excited about this. We're already feeling these energies, right, you guys? And they are so incredibly just beautiful. You are so incredibly beautiful. Own that. Step into that more deeply. 
Uh, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, drop a comment down below, let me know. There are links below to donate if you feel so moved to donate to this channel. And uh, as I said, my email's down below with a description of the different services that I offer if you would like any energetic assistance at this time, any assistance shifting and moving through belief systems, uh, whatever. I do a whole bunch of different things, so just shoot me an email. We can talk. We can figure out what will benefit you the most at this time. It is my honor and my privilege to work with you guys one-on-one -on -one in that way. I think that is all for announcements at the end of the video for whoever is still watching this straight through. I love you guys. You're my champs. Um, I will talk to you all very soon. Have a beautiful 11-11.